Today is Monday, July 11th. What to know about the aftermath of the shocking assassination in Japan, including how Shinzo Abe's ambitions may carry on now. Also, one of former President Trump's closest confidants has had a change of heart. He wants to talk to the January 6th committee after all. Plus, thousands of newly leaked documents detail how Uber used sketchy behavior to get ahead. Elon Musk has called off his deal to buy Twitter, but this is not all over. And they're calling it book talk, how social media is actually getting more people to read offline. Those stories and more coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. People around the world have been sharing their shock and sadness over the assassination in Japan. Remember, former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot while giving a campaign speech on Friday. And later that day, he passed away. President Biden called his death a tragedy for Japan and all who knew him. Throughout the weekend, other world leaders also spoke about Abe, from the UK to Germany to Pakistan to the Philippines to India, Australia, and beyond. Police arrested the suspected shooter right away. Investigators say the gunman spent months planning the attack with a homemade gun. Even though Japan is mourning and police are investigating, the country still held elections over the weekend. And Abe's ruling party won big, getting an even larger majority in the Japanese parliament. As the Washington Post reports, this could let the party carry Abe's biggest ambitions forward. This morning, the U.S. Secretary of State arrived in Tokyo to pay his respects to Abe and meet with some current officials. (laughs) President Biden took action that he says will protect abortion access. But it doesn't actually change any laws right away. He issued an executive order that, for now, basically helps people know what rights they still have and tells his administration to do more. Of course, this comes in response to the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. So what exactly is included? For starters, it tells the Health and Human Services Department to protect access to FDA-approved abortion medications, emergency medical care for women who lose their pregnancies, and birth control. It orders the attorney general to get volunteer lawyers together to make sure patients, providers, and others get good legal representation around the country. And for those who look for information and other abortion services online, the order tasks the Federal Trade Commission with protecting their data privacy. And that's just a few of the key things. Many abortion advocates are calling the order an important first step, but critics say the Biden administration should not be weighing in at all. President Biden has asked Americans to vote for candidates this November who will change the law in Congress, while the Republican National Committee called on Americans to vote for those who will make sure the law does not change. So, to be continued. In a turnaround, former President Trump decided to support one of his longtime advisors testifying in front of lawmakers investigating the Capitol riot. Trump sent a letter to former White House aide Steve Bannon saying he will waive his executive privilege in this case. And with that, Bannon's lawyer says his client is ready to testify as long as it's at a live public hearing. Remember, executive privilege is the idea the president can have secret conversations in certain circumstances. And even though government lawyers have disputed whether executive privilege really applies in this case, that's what Bannon has been giving as a reason not to testify until now. In fact, he's facing criminal charges for contempt of Congress for refusing to comply with the committee last year. So far, lawmakers have not said whether they'll take Bannon up on the offer this time. Before that most recent development, the panel laid out its plans for this week, saying a big focus is going to be on the sworn testimony from former President Trump's White House lawyer, Pat Cipollone. He met with the committee behind closed doors for eight hours on Friday. And some committee members have said Cipollone gave them a lot of relevant information about what was happening in the White House in the weeks running up to January 6th. Former President Trump has called Cipollone's testimony bad for the USA. He said a president should be able to have candid conversations with his White House counsel without the chance they'll testify to a, quote, partisan and openly hostile committee. And Trump still says he did nothing wrong related to January 6th. The next January 6th committee hearing is tomorrow. A wildfire is now threatening Yosemite National Park's largest and most iconic Sequoia Grove. Mariposa Grove is home to more than 500 mature sequoia trees, including the famous 3,000-year-old grizzly giant. Over the weekend, a wildfire in the area grew to more than three square miles. People who live near the fire and hundreds of campers were evacuated. At this point, it's not clear exactly how the fire started. Meanwhile, a historic heat wave continues. 
Already in the last couple of days, cities and towns in Colorado, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas saw record highs for this time of year. Today, the heat is expected to expand further west. Temperatures are rising from Texas to California. And yes, we are talking triple digits in some areas. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. I used to wear so much makeup when I worked for TV news every day, and it always felt so caked on. Well, now I'm happy to report that I get to choose to only wear the makeup I want when I want, and I choose a lot of Thrive Cosmetics products. They have high-performance beauty and skincare products made with clean ingredients. Right now, I am a huge fan of the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. Not only does it lengthen my lashes, but it also supports healthier-looking lashes over time, and it's really easy to remove. I also love the Liquid Balm Lip Treatment. It's a leave-on serum that looks really glossy while also still moisturizing. Plus, Cause is in the name for a reason. With their Bigger Than Beauty mission, every purchase supports organizations that help communities thrive. So now is a great time to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash newsworthy. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S, thrivecosmetics.com slash newsworthy for 15% off your first order. They're now being called the Uber Files. More than 124,000 confidential documents were leaked to The Guardian. They're said to show Uber broke laws, hid information from the police, and secretly lobbied government officials. The British paper shared the documents with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists that helped examine it all. The documents include thousands of emails, iMessages, WhatsApp messages, and more, showing the blunt communications between executives when Uber co-founder Travis Kalanick was still in charge as CEO between 2013 and 2017. One executive apparently joked they had become pirates and said flat out, we are illegal. The report says Uber used a so-called kill switch to block authorities from accessing their IT systems during raids, and that the company saw violence against its drivers in France as a way to gain public support and sympathy. The company's lobbyists allegedly pressed government officials to stop investigations, rewrite laws, and more. And they met with top officials, including then-Vice President Joe Biden. And the list goes on. In response, Kalanick spokesman said the former CEO never authorized any actions that would obstruct justice in any country. A statement said the various accusations are completely false. Kalanick was forced out by shareholders in 2017. In a written statement, an Uber spokesperson acknowledged mistakes in the past, but said Uber is a different company today, adding that 90% of current employees joined after there was a new CEO. It looks like it's going to be a court battle between Twitter and Elon Musk. Lawyers for Musk officially notified Twitter that he wants out of his $44 billion deal to buy the social media platform. The letter cites, as expected, a lack of information about Twitter's fake spam accounts, despite numerous requests. The lawyers argue that, among other things, show Twitter refused to comply with contractual obligations. But Twitter's board is sticking to the original plan. The board chair tweeted, the company is committed to closing the deal at the agreed-upon price and plans to use legal action to enforce the agreement. Stay tuned. The cost to mail a letter just went up a bit. The United States Postal Service raised prices yesterday. Now the price of a forever stamp is 60 cents instead of 58 cents. Of course, forever stamps, as the name suggests, can be used to mail a letter forever, no matter what price you paid for it. First-class mail prices are up 6.5%, but the Postal Service points out that's still lower than the inflation rate of 8.6%. That said, don't expect this to be the last price hike. The Postmaster General said earlier this year that Americans should get used to postage rate increases as the USPS works to become self-sufficient. The God of Thunder is really bringing in the big bucks for Marvel. The fourth Thor movie, Love and Thunder, had a better opening weekend than any other Thor movie so far. It brought in $143 million in North America, easily topping the next most popular movies at the box office, which also happened to be sequels. We're talking Minions, The Rise of Gru, and Top Gun Maverick. Overall, the summer 2022 box office is doing pretty well, like 217% better than last summer. Theaters are not bringing in quite as much money as they were in 2019 before the pandemic, but there also aren't as many wide new releases this year as there were back then. 
Novak Djokovic is back on top of the tennis world. The Serbian player won his 21st Grand Slam at Wimbledon, which is considered the sport's most prestigious championship. The only men's tennis player with more Wimbledon titles than Djokovic is Roger Federer, and only Rafael Nadal owns more major trophies. On the women's side, Elena Rybakina won her very first Grand Slam title at Wimbledon. She was born in Russia, but she's represented Kazakhstan since 2018, so she was allowed to compete, even though Russian players were banned over the war in Ukraine. Rybakina is now looking ahead, now considered one of the early favorites for the U.S. Open. Well, that's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, a message from our sponsor. Because you listen to this show, I know you do not like wasting your time. And calling around a bunch of doctor's offices to see which ones will take your insurance is often such a waste of time. So enter ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, are available when you need them, and take your insurance. So it gives you all the tools you need to find the perfect doctor for your needs. Plus, you can read up on local doctors through verified patient reviews. And again, you will not waste your time checking out doctors that ultimately are out of network. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. And I'm one of them whenever I need a new doctor. So go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Money Monday. It turns out booksellers are doing pretty well these days. More books are selling, the number of bookstores are growing, and they're becoming more diverse. The American Booksellers Association says more than 300 new independent stores have popped up across the United States in the last couple of years, and more than 200 more are preparing to open in the next year or two. Still, there's plenty of business to go around. The same trade organization did a survey of booksellers earlier this year, and 70% of those who responded said they saw higher sales in 2021 than in 2019 or 2020. Many of the new stores that opened during the pandemic are run by non-white business owners, and a lot of the books being sold are written by non-white authors. Social media influencers might have something to do with that. On Instagram, the hashtag Bookstagram has become popular. On TikTok, it's called BookTok. Posts with those hashtags promote certain books or authors, and there are some entire accounts dedicated to reading. Analysts and publishers say they've made a big difference. And some publishing companies are now partnering with influencers hoping to make their books a hit. All right, thank you so much for listening today and every day. We'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day. 